Hey guys, a little update video for you. Full disclosure, I already recorded this last night, but I made the error of judgment of doing it once I'd had one too many vodka and cokes, and I rambled on for far too long. So I'm hoping we get a slightly more condensed and uh, <laughs> maybe a bit more logical video this time round. So the purpose of this video is to talk about uh, a couple of things going on in my life and the impact they've had. So the first thing that happened was a few months ago I found out when my script for Ritalin was no longer available. I was on my last repeat of Ritalin. I went down to the uh, chemist to pick up my script and it wasn't available. And that was the first indication that I had that uh, something had happened with my clinical psychiatrist and he was suddenly disbarred from dispensing medicines to me or any of his other clients. That was the, the first big issue that I was suddenly without Ritalin. It's now been nearly about three months since I had any Ritalin. And the second part of that, of course, was that I then also had to find myself a new psychiatrist. <music> So I have first-hand knowledge now of what it's like to live most of your life without a stimulant like Ritalin when you have ADHD. I now know what it's like to live for an extended period of time, three years in my case, taking Ritalin. And now I know what it's like to suddenly have that Ritalin removed. And I wanted to talk about the absence of Ritalin from my life. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say one thing quickly uh, that I've had a few people sort of ask me about the regularity of my uploads to this channel. And I just wanted to make it very clear that I only ever upload to this channel when I have something to say. I'm not chasing the YouTube algorithm and trying to drum up subscribers and views and all that kind of stuff. I started this channel as a kind of a cathartic uh, kind of vlogging thing, just a way of talking about it. It helped me, and um, I got some really nice correspondence from people and great comments on videos that kind of encouraged me to carry on trucking with it. But the point is that I'm not going to do these bullshit videos just to fill in a schedule and make up the airtime and try and earn a bit of um, money on YouTube. So the only other time you'll see me uploading stuff to this channel is when I have something to say, like now. All right, housekeeping notes aside, let's talk about the first part of my current issue, because it addresses a problem which is certainly huge here in Australia, and from what people have told me, a massive issue worldwide, which is the availability of mental health services and access to them as well. So basically, the problem is I cannot get on the books of a new psychiatrist. The place where my old psychiatrist used to work refused to touch me because apparently it's a conflict of interest. Don't know how I'm a conflict of interest, but there you go. And this applies, as I say, to all of his other uh, patients. We're all in the same boat. And the problem with that is that that particular uh, mental hospital, they've got a kind of monopoly in the area. They have 15 clinical psychiatrists there. So that's a huge pool of talent which is completely blocked off to me. I'm utterly blameless in this. It's fucking irritating, let me tell you. So I've been spending a lot of time on the phone, emailing, and getting various different referrals written by my GP to apply to new practices to try and get on the books. And uh, up until, in fact, this morning, I was having no luck at all. I'd applied to 20 different practices uh, until today I finally got an appointment with a practice in Sydney. I've got, had to go all the way to the big city. It's two hours north of here. Fortunately, they are more than happy to do telehealth appointments. It's a lot more expensive than my old shrink. In fact, three times the price, but the price will come down once all the initial appointments are done and we can just get on to the business of getting me back on the Ritalin. But it's a quite weird position to be in because effectively I'm back at square one. 
no psychiatrist, I have been told, will accept the diagnosis of another psychiatrist. So I have to go through all the diagnosis hoops once more, fill in all those questionnaires, do all the interviews. I've got to get my wife um, and either my father or my sister, I haven't decided which of them I'm going to approach yet, to do one of those tick checklists about what I was like when I was a child. So it's really, really frustrating. I don't understand why once a diagnosis has been made by a trained clinical psychiatrist, and my, my shrink was a, a professor of psychiatry at university as well. So you thought that he knew what he was talking about and that it could be put on my medical record and said, yep, yeah, this guy's got ADHD, but no, apparently it doesn't work that way and they all have to do their own bloody assessments. But there you go. It is what it is. I've got to go through all that again. And I mean, the thing is with ADHD, the irony of this, of course, is that we're all deeply unmotivated individuals who find it very hard to work up the enthusiasm to do anything. And so it's easy to see why people will not bother with that. You know, the stress and hassle of getting appointments and the costs involved in doing it, the stupidly long waiting lists, it's really, really fucking depressing, but I know what my life is like when I'm taking the Ritalin. I know what my life is like when it's not, which is why I feel sufficiently motivated to pursue this. And also I've got the old missus kicking her boot up my ass because she'd quite like me to join the workforce once more. So let's get on to the other part of this video, which is the absence of Ritalin in my life. And I thank you all for reaching out to me after my previous video when I was talking about suddenly being unmedicated. And I have to tell you a very funny story about this. And um, <laughs> the gentleman uh, who th this anecdote refers to will know who I'm talking about. I was sitting there at my uh, desk it was about 10 in the morning here, and my phone rings, and it's a uh, no caller ID. And we've been getting a lot of scam calls here from people pretending to be um, the tax people and all sorts of scams going on. And normally, when it says no caller ID, I hit the old reject button and don't think twice about it. But for whatever reason, I answered the call. And it was a guy with a Welsh accent phoning up to talk to me about uh, ways and means of getting written in and sort of um, sympathizing with me and talking about um, his ADHD journey. Uh, and it was pretty amusing. Now, I have to say that shortly after that, possibly the most ADHD thing ever happened, which was that uh, we're having this conversation and uh, the phone suddenly goes dead. And I'm thinking, oh, Okay, something must have been called away or something like that. A little while later, my WhatsApp starts ringing. And it's the guy, <laughs> hello to you, incidentally, calling me back. Turned out he'd, he'd phoned me on a whim on his Vodafone mobile phone from Wales, just called my mobile phone directly, and it cost him 17 quid. And he'd used up all his uh, allowance on his phone. So it was a 17 quid call to uh, have a chat with some guy on the other side of the planet about his ADHD. Collectively, I think we're the most ADHD people on earth at that moment in time, my friend. It was greatly amused me, that conversation, and lifted my spirits greatly. But anyway, just wanted to share that with you because it made me laugh. So um, let's talk about the ADHD. So I've noticed that it manifests itself in strange ways ways not having it so i drink um diet coke probably a million reasons why i shouldn't drink the stuff i actually prefer pepsi max but anyway uh, i drink a lot of diet soda and lately i've been leaving half finished cans everywhere the other day the missus had a go at me because she found 11 of the bloody things half empty I just sort of drink a bit of it and then completely forget about it to the extent I go off to the fridge and get myself a new one. And by the time I've remembered about the original one, it's got all flat and warm. So, of course, I'm not going to touch it. But the result of that is I'm getting through the, the old Pepsi Max 
much quicker than usual. And that is something that has definitely started post Ritalin. I never did this while I was on the Ritalin. I don't think I did it before I started taking the Ritalin. I don't know, it's a strange one. Anyway, what else have we got here? I've got some notes here I've made about this so that we can get through this a bit quicker. Um, I'm obviously finding it much harder to get motivated to do anything. Daily exercise is a real grind. I do an hour of exercise every single day. It's much harder when I'm on the, the spin bike, which is my preferred mode of exercise, when I've got the old Peloton exercise on there and I'm pedaling away on my spin bike, I find it much harder to work up the enthusiasm to do that and consequently the workouts to close the ring on my Apple Watch to get my move ring closed takes used to take me 45 minutes when I was on the Ritalin but now it's nearer 75 minutes to even 90 minutes just to do exactly the same thing. Uh, what else we've got here? A lot more Reddit and YouTube going on. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. Going to bed later and getting up later. Absolutely. Going to bed at sort of 1, 2, 3 in the morning. I always used to go to bed late. Definitely a night owl, but I think it has definitely got worse since I stopped taking the Ritalin. And I'm getting up at 9 a.m. I mean, we're self-employed here. We run our own business, so it's not like I have to be at a specific place and clock on at a certain time. So I have a bit of flexibility in that regard, but still. What we've got here, drinking way more. Yeah, um, probably... Three or four double vodkas uh, and coke a day. I don't know what that equates to in units. <laughs> um, but when I was on the Ritalin, I was pretty good. I usually not drink much during the week, uh, if at all. I had some weeks where I did, but mostly I was pretty good. And then I might get stuck into the old vodka or Jack Daniels at the weekend. But that is certainly picked up and pretty much every night I'm having three or four very large vodka and cokes. Emails going unanswered. Yeah, so if people email me, you know, uh, you guys with <laughs> ADHD know what it's like. You think, oh, I'll get to that at some point and you never do. And then you get some call from someone saying, where's my, have you seen my email? Why haven't you replied? And oh, fuck, yeah, I've got to reply to that email. And you get round to it because suddenly it's urgent uh, and you Dopamine levels are fired up and you can address it, but that's definitely got worse. All right, what we got next? Neglecting my health. I got diagnosed with diabetes last year, as you all know, if you've seen that video, and uh, I should have had some new blood tests done uh, in about the end of January, and that never happened. And obviously that's probably quite important to know how I'm tracking with my insulin injections and my metformin pills to check all my dosages and stuff like that but i haven't done anything about it this despite actually even seeing my gp last week to get another new referral for a psychiatrist and him saying to me get your bloods done and i still haven't done it so that's not good hold harder to hold on to a thought yeah I, I mean i'm sure you guys all get this too regularly that if you're talking to someone and they interject mid-conversation, you forget where you were going. In fact, and the, the irony of this is, of course, people with ADHD talk over the top of other people. It's a well-known trait. So <laughs> we're probably the worst offenders for this, but it's really bad for me now that if somebody cuts me off mid-sentence, it's gone. And I'll be two days later, 1.30 in the morning, lying there in bed going, oh, Fuck yeah, that was what I was going to say. That's definitely got really worse. But look, Mrs. calls me the mad professor because I'm just forever forgetting shit right in the middle of what I'm doing. Uh, and here is the last one that I've kind of noted here, which is more pointless hyper-focus. This is always a huge issue in my life, and it still is actually when I'm on the old Ritalin, but not as bad. The most recent one I did was... I suddenly started researching sailing around the world in a blue water sailing boat, right? So down this rabbit hole, investigating all the different kinds of boats and the logistics of it, um, how you sail these things with two people, how shifts work at night, how it works in terms of food and water and what kind of 
batteries you have on this, even down to things like how you utilize the trade winds, how to avoid the hurricane season, and all this other stuff about sailing around the world. And the thing about that is, right, obviously I'd want to sail around the world with my missus, but she gets nervous if we go out in the ocean walking out and a wave comes in and her feet lift off the bottom so she's not touching the sand, she gets nervous. Does that strike you as somebody who would want to get in a small, you know, 41 foot boat or something and fuck off around the world? <laughs> it's just insanity. There's no way she'd ever do it. But I've done all this bloody research about sailing around the sodding world in a sailing boat. And I know it would never happen, but Christ Almighty, if this ever comes up on a trivia test, someone asks about trade winds or where you should best place to shelter from hurricanes when you're in the bloody the Bahamas, I'm your man. All right, well, that'll do us, guys. Yeah, still got none of my best friends in my life. No riddling. But there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon. So I've got an appointment in April with this new shrink. Hopefully he'll say, yep, yeah, all good, and put me back on the good stuff. And then I've got a shrink uh, and a supply of the methyl phenidate. So just wanted to bring you all up to speed. This video has gone a lot better than the one I did last night. I've learned a lesson there, I'll tell you. Way too many vodka and cokes, God almighty. Anyway, thank you all to everybody who has reached out to me talking about the... Um, the, the Ritalin and the psychiatry side of things and sharing your own struggles with adult ADHD and the head fuck that is getting yourself sorted and trying to deal with the fact that nobody really treats ADHD with the seriousness it deserves, helping people get the help they need to lead a fulfilling, productive and enjoyable life. All right. That'll do. When I've got something else to say, something winds me up. If you haven't seen the video I did about the ADHD article, please go and click on that because that guy really, Dominic Lawson, God, he pissed me off. Uh, go and have a look at that. Uh, and so when the next thing pisses me off or I have an update for you, I will add some new content for this channel. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Catch you later.